Are, are, are y'all ready to get this started? Three, two, one. Hey, y'all know what time it is. You know what it is. You are now tuning into the best business radio program in Central VA. Turn it up. On the mic with Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On the Mic with Mike. It is the premier business radio program in the area. I'm your host, Mike King. We are here at the lovely Boathouse in Hopewell. ESPN Richmond 106.1 is where you can find me, 5 to 7 a.m. We are the premier business radio program in the area. We're here with the Tri-Cities Business Summit today. I'm here with my man, John, John Brandt of the Colonial Heights Chamber of Commerce. John, welcome. Thank you for having me, Mike. Uh, again, I'm John Brent, the Executive Director of the Colonial Heights Chamber of Commerce. Welcome everybody that came, and we hope that you all have a good time networking and becoming part of the summit. All right, John Brent, you got to give folks the uh, Colonial Heights Chamber spiel one time. You know, this is the money-making time. <laughs> so like we all say, um, our chamber it doesn't um, sit in just the seven and a half square miles of Colonial Heights. We um, stretch out throughout the Tri-Cities area. And we're just here to support businesses and support um, our communities. All right, thank you. All righty, so as I said, we are here at the uh, Boathouse in Hopewell. We're going to bring in Kim Harrison, who is the Director of Marketing here. Kim, welcome. Thank you for hosting us today. Uh, you know, the facilities are lovely. Everyone, a lot of people don't know who you are, so let them know who hospitality is. Sure, thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you all here today. Um, I'm Kim Harrison. I'm the Director of Marketing for the Hospitality Family Restaurant Group. Um, our restaurant group inclu includes three concepts across eight locations. So we have the Boathouse locations, four across the Richmond area, Casa del Barco is also across the Richmond area, and then Island Shrimp Company, which is our newest concept um, down in Southside. Um, we are thrilled to have you all here. Um, we hope you come visit us at our restaurants. We're open. Um, and we would love to welcome you and your families. Thanks All right, thank you. One of the things we're going to talk about with you guys on the next panel is the culture that you guys have. It's a winning culture, and that's what we always talk about organizations and cultures. All right, thank you. So, uh, really quick, we'd like to thank the folks who made this thing possible. So, our, our title sponsor is Alfredo Jared Reynolds from Brunswick EDA. Uh, so, I have a second or two to talk. Good morning. My name is Alfredo Jared Reynolds. I'm the Director of Economic Development for Brunswick County which is the location of choice, the gold standard in business, family, education, and leisure. And so we're excited to sponsor today's event. All right, we'd also like to thank uh, the Colonial Heights Chamber of Commerce. Good friend, Kim Ely, KW Publishing, Mama Shell's Cafe, Audi, Audi, Aaron Owens with U.S. Pest Control, Nicole Reed, uh, the Davis is on the end. Those are sort of people who believe in the idea that I do, that business can help society be better. That's what it is, and so they sponsor events that we have, because that way we can put the information out there. Without further ado, we're going to get started. One of my, my ESPN, Richard, we're going to start off with the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. Thank you for uh, having me, Mike. It's great to be here. All righty. You're kicking it off. You're, you're the big dog here. We're going to talk about what's happening out here. I always ask people, what do the streets say? What is the, from a fiscal standpoint, from a social economic standpoint, What's it look like for your city now? Well, you know, we were really surprised coming through COVID that our numbers financially weren't that fat. Uh, 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 lodging obviously was down uh, because people weren't traveling, but uh, meals, meals tax and sales tax were up. People were at home, they were grocery shopping, doing projects uh, around their house. So those kind of things really generated a lot of revenue, which, which, which was awesome. We also had the opportunity to try to support the local businesses. We got CARES Act money, uh, about $500,000 that we were giving out grants, free grants to small businesses. Uh, depending on how many employees they had, they got up to five, uh, 5000 or $10,000. Great to be able to help them get through the difficult times. So things are good. I mean, we're, we're excited to be pulling out of COVID, uh, and we're looking forward to having a really great year. From a business model, what, when you came through COVID, what are you doing now that you never would have done before? Uh, I think trying to promote the city as much as we can and, and the businesses that we have. Uh, we have a uh, new baseball team, uh, the, the Tri-City Chili Peppers, which is really excited uh, the community. People are going out, they're averaging over a thousand uh, spectators at each game. Uh, we. Uh, you know, just trying to bring the community together. We had, we, we really stepped out of the box uh, and had
had the Fort Clifton uh, Arts and uh, Arts and Crafts Festival, which was really at the beginning of COVID ending. So that was something really unique, just to celebrate uh, uh, pulling out of COVID and getting the community together. So basically, just trying to get the community back in, into a normal routine. All righty, thank you. Uh, up next, we have our banking sponsor. So Brody. You're, you're the banker on the panel. Does he look, he looks like a banker, right? You know what I'm talking about? When people go see the banker, we get dressed up. So the banker's here. What's, I mean, we, when you were on the program before, let's talk about what, what, should, what it looks like from the banking aspect out there now. All right, thank you, Mike. Um, so as far as banking, I mean, things you know, with COVID really sped up. I mean, banking technology has always been there. Um, but over the, just this year period, they, I read an article that said banking sped up just digitally uh, over a five-year period exponentially. Um, but basically what that means is everyone sees a coin shortage out there. It's because people aren't using cash. Um, people are using their debit cards and stuff like that. So you'll see a change as far as that. But COVID did a number on the banking industry as far as the digital evolution. And the, you, you got to give us the name of the bank. You just can't. You know, oh yeah. You just can't uh, leave so us in the dark. Yeah. We, we may go to the wrong bank. Yeah. Brody with the Bank of Southside Virginia, member of FDIC. All righty, fine. Okay, let's talk about economic development. Well, Alfredo, let's start with you, and then we're gonna go to your partner down down the panel there. What's it look like for you guys out there now? So economic development in the midst of a pandemic, we had to be creative. Um, we were working while everyone else was kind of sleeping a bit. You know, we took that as an opportunity. Um, a lot of times people said, well, because of COVID, because of COVID. And they use it as, now mind you, it was great. And the impact was great. We can't lessen that. But we did take an opportunity to be creative and think outside of the box. How can we still open a business during a pandemic? How can we ensure that this business will survive in the midst of a pandemic? And we actually opened seven businesses in the middle of a pandemic that are still open, that are still thriving. And so we supported them with the resources that they needed to ensure that they would be successful. We didn't want them to open and then close. But we are trying to ensure that they survive. And so we had to be creative in our marketing, and our incentives, using some of the COVID impact money to ensure that we were uh, very strategic and good stewards over what we were given to ensure that we helped our locality. Brunswick County is a small rural locality. We have 16,000 people in our population. When I say Brunswick County, people, people say, where's that? But we are the original home of Brunswick Stew. We're located um, right off of Interstate 85, uh, Highway 46, Highway 58. And, you know, I say we're nowhere, but we're an hour from everywhere. We're an hour from Richmond, an hour from Raleigh, two hours from, from Norfolk. And so we are the place to be, and we're up and moving, and we're working really hard to, to uh, prove ourselves during the midst of the pandemic as we're trying to come out of it. All right, thank you. So for, as I said to folks, uh, for folks who don't know me, this is a, I'm buttoned up right now. But I, sometimes I can get carried away doing this. I forgot to let the folks on the panel introduce themselves, <laughs> which would probably be pretty good. So, Ray, can you kick it off for us? Hey, my name is uh, Ray Ferguson. I'm a small business owner in Petersburg, uh, retired Army guy, and uh, just love working here with the chamber and working here in the area and uh, watching all the growth uh, with the economic developers and uh, and just, just seeing the growth that's going on. I'd, I think that uh, what we're doing right now is very challenging and thinking out of the box is exactly what we have to do as business owners to be able to go to the next level. You're also a roofer and we always hear about this short, we got a, we got a real estate agent there. We're hearing this uh, shortage of lumber. We're going to circle back with you and yep. talk about is that real? Oh, it's real. <laughs> oh, it's real. <laughs> oh, it's real. I flip houses too and let me tell you, the prices have gone up uh, astronomically uh, as we know right now that the, the, the market is super hot. And to be able to find deals, it's uh, it, it's very hard right now. But and that's that's a good thing because uh, I think the market's just going to keep going for a while. Okay, Brody. Uh, hello, my name is Brody Rosal, the brand manager with the Bank of Southside Virginia, member of FDIC. Uh, we just really focus on the community. Um, that's actually our main main purpose around here. But that's the main thing we focus on. And thanks uh, for inviting me today. I'm a realtor um, and broker, associate broker with ESP Realty as well. So I specialize in residential um, and commercial sales. Um, so we help people buy, sell, and invest in real estate um, within the Richmond and Tri Cities market. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron Owens, and I'm the owner of US Pest Control located here in Richmond, Virginia. 
Uh, we specialize in taking a proactive approach to pest control by setting up preventative measures uh, for homeowners and working out commercial building owners as well. Uh, we're a member of the Chesterfield Chamber, and it's been great being connected to Mike King, and thanks again for the opportunity. It's good seeing everyone. I appreciate that right there. That was a shameless plug. I, 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 I'll take that all the time. Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm Greg Kachuba, the mayor of Colonial Heights. I'm excited to be here. Some of the uh, boards that I sit on that is kind of tied to this is the Virginia Gateway region, and I think we have a representative here, Amy, that won't be speaking. And then also Richmond Regional Tourism, which really wants to promote businesses not only in uh, Richmond, but in the Tri-City area as well. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Thank you. Good morning, I'm Alec Rebner, the Executive Director of the Crater Planning District Commission. And a Planning District Commission is a little government office that provides support to 11 localities in and around the Tri-Cities area. And we uh, focus on issues that are difficult for one locality to tackle by itself. And those issues range from tourism management to transportation planning and from economic development planning to environmental planning. We also provide a suite of services to small businesses that uh, might be surprising to folks that are, are not used to working with planning district commissions, but we provide a, a procurement assistance center that helps small businesses compete for contracts that might be through the state or federal government, such as Fort Lee, and we provide a revolving loan fund, which is working capital for uh, businesses in the region to expand. And so uh, it's a broad set of, of services, and we're pleased to have the opportunity to come out and speak to Colonial Heights Chamber members and to the audience, Mike King's audience. And, and help folks learn more about what the, what we do and the services that we offer and how we can help businesses and communities in the greater planning district. So thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, I'm Amy Everett, and I'm with Virginia's Gateway Region. We are a private nonprofit group that represents seven um, localities. That includes Colonia Heights, Hopewell, Petersburg, Dinwiddie, Prince George, Sussex, and Surrey. And our main goal is advancing business and economic development in this region. Um, we do a variety of services, and that includes e servicing existing businesses with expansion, that's business retention and expansion, and then marketing our region for both um, national and international companies to relocate here, with the main goal of improving quality of life for our residents, providing um, quality, high-paying jobs for our residents, and increasing the tax base um, for our, and revenue for our localities. So thank you for having me. Hello, my name is Kelly Suazo Davis. I am a certified leadership coach and also the CEO of Anchor In. We are a three-pronged company providing leadership development, um, also coaching, consulting, and training. We have been in business for five years. We are new to the Chesterfield, Richmond, regional metro area. Um, and we are focusing our um, delivery on really training a robust generation of leaders, the next generation of leaders, to be able to shatter the leadership gap that we all are aware of and um, create a workforce that actually shows up in a space and a culture that is conducive to their growth and development. All right. Hi, my name is uh, Charles Davis, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Anchor In. I have over 19 years um, plus of military service, here soon to retire. Um, and like Kelly said, we're here integrated in networking in the uh, Chesterfield. We're members of the Chesterfield um, uh, Commerce, and also we're looking uh, really to go also beyond coaching and how we do that is also with leader uh, development workshops geared to not only uh, develop the future leaders in their competency but also character to uh, move uh, and really be a part of a community and an organization that pushes um, business forward, that pushes opportunities forward while, while digging into both and leading through character and competency. We'd like to thank you guys for, for giving the information. We're going to start out with the topic that we, we think is, is pretty important. We hear it all the time. Uh, Mr. Owen from uh, U.S. Pest Control, is there a shortage of talent that's after people who are, who are looking for work? The floor is yours, sir. Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a shortage. Um, see, in my line of work, we get into crawl spaces, so not everyone is geared up to do that type of thing. Shocking. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's number one. Um, you know, we can hire guys that do, you know, preventative spraying on the house. That's great, but 
I'm looking for techs that can do the full service things. They're not afraid to get in cross spaces and um, look for termites, look for mold, uh, check the insulation out in the house, uh, moisture barriers, all that good stuff. So I haven't had too much difficulty. <coughs> I've been trying to bring in folks in my uh, line of work that I actually know personally as well. Um, I've actually had a couple first cousins that shown some interest in learning the business. So these are people that I can depend on also, and they have that go get mentality. So there's definitely folks out there it's just finding the right people and making sure that you can personally connect with them. So uh, Brody, from the banking standpoint, what's the, what's the landscape look like for you when, when people show up? What's something that you, we've talked about this on the program before, something that business owners or people aspiring to be in business from the banking standpoint, what do they need to have and do? Yeah, so when it comes to, uh, you know, coming to work as a banker, I mean, it really just goes into, because, I mean, there are two ways you could do it. I mean, there, there's a product where it's just, okay, I'm going to push a product or this is exactly what I have, or you can kind of sit and listen to the people and kind of understand. I think one of the biggest things that we are seeing in banking is we're no longer going after people that have 10 years of banking service. We're going after the person that has five years of uh, waiter or waitress service. You know, they have that retail mentality to where when a customer comes in, that's what they want to talk about. That's who they want to help. It's not, you know, okay, I'm going to get this done. It's like, well, they have that positive drive. And just understanding that, you know, that's something that, that pushes them forward, that lifts them up, and just talking to people and helping them out. So we're just focusing specifically on retail services and stuff like that. All right. Thank you. Amy, whenever people come on the program, we ask them, the streets are talking. What are the streets saying from a business standpoint that it looks like? What are business owners saying to you, and how are you attracting people to come to, to your region saying, hey, this is a place you got to be to conduct business? Well, I think that the streets are definitely echoing the workforce development issues, um, the lack of available um, interested employees. At the Gateway region, we do have a um, specific focus on workforce development. We have uh, Michelle Rogers, and she hand, she's our Director of um, Workforce Development. And it's a really unique position, um, first in the state and probably the nation. We partnered with CCWA, which is um, the arm of John Tyler Community College. And so she, she works with them and with us as well, kind of on a 50-50 basis, whatever the need is. And her goal is to really connect businesses with all the resources that are available. There are so many resources. Um, but it can be overwhelming, you know, for a business, especially a small business. And so she works to meet with employee uh, employers and find out what their needs are and then tailor um, offerings from CCWA and John Tyler, um, whether, you know, it's, it's training, recruitment, you know, various things like that. So that's probably one of the hottest topics right now on the street is workforce development. But I have to say that our region has done... Um, incredibly well during COVID or coming out of COVID, um, more so than you would probably expect. We are in a very strategic location with the interstates 85, 95, um, 295, 460, all really converging, you know, right here in the Tri-Cities and the Gateway region. And because of that, some of our biggest industries that we've had success with are logistics and distribution. And, you know, as everybody knows, if you were sitting at home, you were ordering from Amazon. <laughs> um, we're very grateful to have the Amazon um, locations that we do in our region. And their distribution centers have just been on fire. Um, we also have an Aldi distribution center, Food Lion, Walmart, um, among some others. And so, you know, those, not only did they not stop, I mean, they picked up great speed. And so that has, you know, been very, very encouraging to us. Sorry about that. I'm multitasking. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Alrighty, so, uh, Ray, we talked about this uh, thing with housing. Everyone here, so Nicole Reed always asks, uh, and she has a program. Okay, this is a shameless plug. Uh, Nicole Reed Real Estate, it's the real playbook with Nicole Reed on ESPN Richmond, on the choice. We always talk about the market's on fire. It is. I always ask her, is it, is it cooling off? Okay. <laughs> no, it, it's not cooling off. So between you and Ray, explain to us out there what's happening with the market. We're talking, and we always hear about lumber. You know, the price. Of, now, 
When the people on the street know that something's up with lumber, you know it's bad because we don't know. That's not our industry. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's <laughs> the talking? House, yeah, the housing market is just super crazy. And even when COVID first happened, we didn't know what that would look like. And maybe for the first 30, 45 days, it was kind of quiet. But after that, it just exploded. And it has continued to grow each and every quarter. Houses are selling way over listing price, way over market value, which is in return bringing all the market values up in the different areas. Um, and there's just a short, well, I would say shortage, because we're told not to say shortage. You know? <laughs> the fact of it is a shortage that's on the market, but there is tons of inventory out there um, in the areas. It's just a matter of finding the sellers. Um, and being able to connect them with the buyers. We have so many buyers out there, and a lot of people are competing to be able to become homeowners. And sometimes, unfortunately, the ones that are like first time home buyers that don't have the influx of cash to be able to compete with those that do um, are missing out. And so, hopefully, it will get better. I don't, I don't see us slowing down within the next 12 months, um, at least. And uh, we have had a little bit of slowing right now with, this, with the kids being in school, but we're still having multiple offers, just maybe not 30. We're maybe having 10 or 15. Um, but I think that that will increase again once, you know, people stop vacationing because people are now out of school, they're vacationing, but I think that will again increase, you know, come August time as well. One of the things you also said to me is if you don't have enough money, don't come to the table. Now is not the time to ask for things. It's just not the time. And, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's just a reality of where we're at, and people are getting very discouraged because they're out there, they're putting five, six, seven, ten offers out there, and they're not getting their offers accepted because they don't have the cash. People are waiving inspection contingencies, they're waiving appraisal contingencies, or they're providing a big gap of appraisal um, gap. So, say, for instance, if a house is um, for sale for three fifty, but it only appraises for three twenty five, and people are willing to come to the table with twenty five thousand dollars for the difference of that appraisal. And people, first time homebuyers, really don't have that cash. Um, and so, some of the strong conversations that I have with some of my clients is, hey, we just need to wait. We need to wait it out. We need to let the market level out a little bit, and then let's go back into the marketplace and and go from there. Um, so that they're not just so discouraged that they end up never being a homeowner okay. for any time soon. Just, just a couple of points. Uh, I'm going to go back to the trades industry real quick, what we're talking about, pest and, and uh, builders and roofers or whoever it is. Uh, we had problems before COVID. We had problems showing up on time, doing the customer service, doing the things that we needed to do. Now we have a major problem on our hands with not only finding good workers, uh, if you ever read the book, Who Moved My Cheeks, yeah. okay? Yeah. But now it's who, who Moved My Employee? Because, I mean, if you, think of it, if you think of it that way, that's exactly what's going on. And, and, it's, and, and what you're saying is that the one who can crawl into the crawl space and do all the things they need to do, that's exactly what they need to do, but they also have to interface with that customer. And we've had a problem with that in years, and I, we've got to get that fixed. And so the leadership development teams and stuff like that coming on board, I think that's going to really help. To, for the for the housing market, as a roofer with RoofMax, um, I would tell you that I've been in a house before, a lady who bought a house with no inspection, and she had leaks coming down in her living room and her dining room. She said, oh, God, please help me. Mm -hmm. So if you do things like that and you don't have a realtor that's telling you to wait, you're setting yourself up for some potential problems. And the third point is, in two years, investors like me are going to come along and be like, well, now you're underwater with your house. Now what are you going to do with it? That's coming because there's a bubble right now, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the only way I can really put it. All right, now I see Kelly Davis down there. She got the hand. Besides that, besides the great thing she does, she's a military spouse too. So we got to give a shout out to, you know, all of the, the you know, the military spouses out there. I found mine in the Army 40 years ago. <laughs> Lucky you. So, uh, exactly. That's what she said. <laughs> That's, all right, Kelly, what you got? So um, to touch back on the workforce development aspect of, you know, the talent pool, pre-COVID, people were exploring entrepreneurship. They were launching into other career fields. Post-COVID, people are exiting not just because the talent is not there. They have options. So COVID highlighted 
many broken systems, cultural shifts within organizations, and employees have realized, I can pick up my talent and go and start my own business or find another company that actually will pour into my development. So as we talk about just, you know, filling those gaps is just not for skill. It's also the company to, needs to do a, a reflective and retrospective view of what they're doing as a company to keep those employees. So if we don't do that, we're going to continue to see the entrepreneurial market rise, people coming out trying to start their own businesses. At the same time, we're going to have corporations, government, and nonprofits hurting for talent because they're not equipped neither to pour back into their employees. So we need to focus as companies to say, what are we doing to actually pour back into, you know, from, from high school? So I talk about leadership succession from high school. What does that look like? What is it training up the next workforce pool? What does that look like? So we really need to just take some time and, and consider that. All righty. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. uh, when we talk to, okay, here's another shameless plug for John Brandt. So every Monday morning, you can hear uh, the Colonial Heights Chamber of Commerce. John Brand is there. He's the Pied Piper of, of business in, in Colonial Heights. He's always talking about the business. I ask him, why is it, and we had talked to some of the uh, business owners in the town. They, they say business is easy. It's easy to do business. Colonial Heights is, is open for business. It's easy. Let's talk about the culture that you set there, and how does that happen? Yeah, well, Colonial Heights is centrally located in the Tri-City areas, but also we have in our backyard uh, Fort Lee. And we as a uh, community and city try to provide uh, a quality of life for the men and women who serve in the military when they're not on duty. When they take that uniform off, they come over to uh, Colonial Heights to grab something to eat, maybe do a little bit of shopping and entertainment. So that, that drives up a lot of business for the city of Colonial Heights. Then on the other side of us, we have Virginia State University, and the students, uh, they come over and also, not only maybe get a part-time job, but they, they uh, get shop, and they also eat and, and, and get involved in our community. So we're kind of sandwiched amongst not only the people that live there, but Virginia State and Fort Lee, and that's a real plus for us. When you had said that you work with, with uh, Richmond Regional Tourism, oh, I have an announcement coming out about that soon, yeah. but that's a, me that's a media you know, tease right there. I'm, I'm going to leave that one. Oh, it's, it, when you guys work in collaboration with others, it's not one man on an island anymore. Like a lot of times it, it was before. So you, you got Alex sitting next to you. Alex, what's, uh, let's talk about the partnerships when certain things need to get done and it just can't be that one locale. Sure. Well, tourism is a good example. The re reason why is because the communities in the Petersburg Area Regional Tourism Organization are Dinwiddie, Prince George, Colonial Heights, Hopewell, and um, Petersburg, obviously. And the, each of those communities has a set of assets that's complementary to one another, but none of them has a full complement of assets, including restaurants, hotels, attractions, and, uh, and, and destinations. And because of that, the five communities work together, complement each other nicely. We have uh, quality hotels, quality restaurants, attractive destinations that attract people across state boundaries and across the nation to our, to our communities to, uh, to help to build our economy. And all this together also helps to complement our, our area as its quality of life. And uh, folks that live in Colonial Heights might work in Petersburg, and someone who uh, works, uh, someone who works in Colonial Heights might live in Hopewell and commute. So it's important for us as the Tri-City area to think about ourselves as a as a broader community. And I think John spoke to that a bit too in his opening remarks about how the Colonial Heights Chamber of Commerce is supporting the entire Tri-Cities area. So there's benefit to us working together, to pooling our resources, to finding economies of scale, and to uh, and to coordinate our efforts. One of the things uh, doing business, so I came to Richmond in 2014. One of the things that I always noticed was a lot of things that happened in the Tri-Cities that sometimes you think people don't get the message that's happening down here. And that's one of the reasons why after talking with, with John, we wanted to come down and have the area tell a story. Because it's not just a little place that's down from Richmond. There's a lot of things going on. So this part of the program is called... Uh, it's not really called that, but I, I, think that <laughs> I just thought that was pretty cool. We're, we're going to, the industry that you're in, you're going to tell us something about that the people wouldn't know. Like Brunswick, you know, that towering metropolis of one stoplight. <laughs> I come from one of those, you know. People say, where are you from? I said, Philly. Well, then it's not Philly, it's Lansdale. Okay, no, no, not Lansdale, it's that little town right before then 
with the one life. So, uh, Brunswick, what do people need to know that they don't know? Okay, we do have one stop light. There you go. Right, ourselves on that. You either go to the light, go left, right, go back, because you're lost. Um, so it's easy to give directions. Um, one way that we try to make people know that we are the original home of Brunswick Stew, I think everyone's had some, some Brunswick Stew in their lifetime. Well, we are the original home of Brunswick Stew. Um, one thing that you may not know about Brunswick County is that we're on the edge. We're, we're ruling rustic, but we're willing to try and embrace other things that make us stand out. Uh, we are nestled located between Greensville County and Mecklenburg County, and so they have their own niches, but what makes us stand out? Besides the stew, um, we are becoming the hub for unmanned systems, for drone training and development. We actually had NATO come to little old Lawrenceville, little old Brunswick County, and do training. I actually met the head of NATO, or their armed forces, and, and we had uh, lieutenants and generals from all over. And so we are actually, next in two weeks, we'll have Virginia Aviation come in to do flight school for free for our residents in Brunswick County and a drone camp at our airport. And so those are some of the out of the box things that we want to be, the, the, the hub for unmanned systems and trainings, which will connect us outside of just rural Southside Virginia, but all over. Yes. Right. Is, is Space Force coming down next? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say it, Mark. That is the plan. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but on a roof inside, people think we, uh, as roof max, we rip off roofs and things that we don't. We actually use soybean products to spray a roof and bring it back to life so you don't have to replace your roof. Um, so that's one thing you may not know. Um, I also am part owner in an escape room business. And one thing you may not know is we have a mobile escape room trailer to where we can take go do training out with your different companies and do team buildings and things of that nature. It, uh, that works out well, too. A, a mobile escape room? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a 20 foot trailer we put you in there. You may or may not get out. Get out. And, and, uh, but, but basically, uh, it takes you about 20 minutes to get out. you got to destroy an asteroid from Brunswick uh, before, you, before, you, before you are able to get out of the actual off your mission. So, I met you, how many years ago? I was on doors, yep. Danny. Yep. You it, sure were. Did, didn't you chase me down in the truck one day? Yes, I, did. I think you did. Because you I were do. looking into it. Yep. That, that's what I did, but I didn't have an heart to come into the escape room. <laughs> so let's talk about the tourism part of attracting the people to the escape room in Petersburg. Yeah, so I'm mainly a Facebook marketer. Um, I do a lot of Facebook marketing. Uh, we are looking into maybe doing some commercials. I've used Facebook over and over. Really, it's word of mouth. It's word of mouth from people who have a good time doing certain things. Uh, your family and friends will let you know what is good here in this area. Um, and really all you got to do is just listen, and uh, you'll find out the good, the bad, and uh, like places like, you know, like, like the boathouse. I mean, this is just gorgeous out here. Um, don't get to come out here enough. But there's a lot of very good things that are going on in the Tri-Cities area. And uh, what I really like is hearing things from Fort Lee about the different things that are going on in the area as well. And, uh, and like I said, just listen to your neighbors and uh, your friends and family. They'll tell you kind of where to go. Rudy? All right. So uh, I know banking is extremely fun and very it's riveting. It's just <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know what, I got up. Yeah, so it's, you know, especially with banking, it's not something that you get up and you're like, man, I'm so pumped to go do some banking. But it's, um, what we've been able to do is really, uh, going back to the community thing, everything we're doing is for the community, kind of building it out through there. One thing I don't think that people, and it's kind of under-realized, but, so it's a, kind of a contrary, but, uh, or a contradiction, but a community bank with big bank um, uh, capabilities as far as technological. So we're kind of working that way, I mean, especially with the digital realm. I mean, I think you're going to start seeing stuff coming up, and not just at BSV, uh, but at other banks as well, that you, you can basically do everything from the from your phone. I mean, we're working on stuff to where it's going to be just basically through your app. You can do everything, and I think that's going to be a big, big change and something I definitely wasn't ready for at first with the community bank, but I think we're really going that far. One of the things we talked about before was some of the safety things that are out there, mm -hmm. and, and drop some of those on some of the listeners about things to be cautious yep. about from the banking and money standpoint. Like when I first heard of Cash App, mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe it. I'm telling my son, what? <laughs> you can just send people money like, we're not Western Union. <laughs> <laughs> I went to ask a 22 year old, I'm like, what's this thing Cash App? <laughs> She's like, you don't know? No, 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 I don't know, I'm old. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's, I mean, there are so many things out there now, but the biggest thing I would say is making sure that you do your research first. 
I can't, and nothing specifically against Cash App, but I do see a whole lot of stuff going on with all of these type of vendors. Make sure you vet them, figure out who will answer your call. Some of these, you know, you have Cash App, you have, you know, so I'm not going to name all of them. We're naming them. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know I'm going to name them. All right, well, all right, well yeah, and so you've got, you've got to figure out who you can reach out to. With some of them, you actually have to tweet them to get customer service. Could you imagine having to talk to, like, it just blows my mind. So, you know, just understanding, like, for instance, um, you know, good customer service. Like, for instance, I know this is a big company, but Amazon. You call Amazon and need a refund, they're going to refund it. Like, right then, you can talk to somebody. So, understanding when you are going with these companies, if you have to do a dispute, you have to talk to them. And that's the part where it gets real tricky, and then we get the calls, and they, it's like, well, why can't you fix this? It's like, well, it's with them, and then it's, so just do your due diligence, and especially when it comes to, you know, sending money, especially. All right, thank you. Yeah. Nicole? I would first like to correct the fact that banking is sexy. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's got me where I'm at today. Yes. <laughs> she makes me aware of that, yes. <laughs> but clear, or, you know, industry-wide, it's kind of like the sales game. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So um, as far as real estate, I mean, for me, myself and my company, we do, we don't just sell real estate, we build generational wealth. So one of my goals is to build wealth and teach my clients and also my employees how to, um, how to build wealth through real estate. You want me to use this? And turn it on, please. And turn it on? Okay. So. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. So as I was saying, one of the things we do is help build generational wealth. Um, and teaching our clients and also our employees that there's so many different ways in real estate to actually build wealth. I mean, there's over 100 different types of ways. So being able to show them and teach them how to take the real estate, the asset that they have, and create a, a wealth for their families and for their generation um, is one of the things that we really, really focus on. So it's more than just finding your home, your primary residence, and just selling real estate. It's about educating them. Um, and I think the more as realtors, as we educate people, because real estate is a commodity, real estate is a way that people can actually build wealth outside of you know other commodities like gold and silver and different things like that. But real estate is, if you look at a lot of the millionaires or um, business owners that are out there, um, they have, they build wealth through real estate. You know, that's one of the things financing is, I think, number one wealth, a, a way of building um, wealth, but real estate is number two. And so teaching people that real estate is actually an asset and how to be able to utilize that asset um, for themselves is something that we teach. A lot of people go straight to, I want to have a primary residence, but that might not be the, the first and best method. You know, what about an investment? How about your investment property pays for your primary residence? You know, so being able to have that concept and understand how you can utilize real estate to actually build wealth and then pass it down to your, your kids and, and their grandchildren. Right. So, uh, Aaron, really quickly. So, you're in a family business and you didn't know the pest control business. Let's talk a little about transitioning and what that means to take over a family business and rebrand it uh, for where you are now. Yeah, so um, once again, Aaron Owens, U.S. Pest Control. Um, U.S. Pest Control began in 1991 um, by my grandparents. Um, business was doing well. It got to a point. So my grandmother, she is an accountant full time. She has her own firm here in Richmond. Uh, my grandfather, he passed away, so it got to the point where U.S. Pest was not under proper management, I would say, with the technicians that were out in the field, and we were actually to a point where um, they were looking at selling the company to a big name company, and they were basically going to give basically nothing to take over the business, to take the clients. Um, I'm 26 years old. I stepped in when I was 20 years old when I saw that kind of going down. And I said, let me learn this thing. Let me, let me learn the pest control industry. Um, let, me, let me hop in and see where our customer base is now. Let me get certified and let's do this thing. So I stepped in, um, started running routes, um, going out in the field, selling, 
um, making connections, for example, here, doing some networking. And we've been taking off ever since. Main thing that I've noticed over time is customer service is key. Um, establishing those personal bonds with people. Um, and that's what we take pride in at US Best. Um, not just hiring anybody, but people that we know for sure is going to be nice to customers, not um, you know halfway do jobs, but then also uh, take pride in educating clients. So the original question was, in your industry, what, what do clients normally not know? So one thing I would say is super important with the pest control industry is having those annual termite inspections. Um, you'd be very surprised on what goes on under your house. <laughs> Unless you are having someone come out once a year. So that's the number one recommendation. And termites, they actually live 100 feet underground. You'd be surprised. So that's a fun fact for you guys. Anybody is susceptible to getting termites. Um, so if you have a crawl space, make sure you have somebody come crawl that crawl space. If you have a slab, make sure someone comes inside, check all your walls, and make sure there's no soft areas. And another thing you can do is set up a preventative treatment around your property soil to put that barrier around there, and then that gets you under a warranty plan. So we're definitely able to do that. Um, like I said, my name is Aaron Owens, and I'm with U.S. Pest Control. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, the yes. sales pitch for Colonial Heights, sir. Uh, well, Colonial Heights, we try to maintain a small town community type atmosphere. We have um, events like uh, Veterans Day, Memorial Day services, as well as our uh, annual Christmas parade, which is at night. I think that's the only uh, locality that has it at night, and, and you know, the 4th of July. But at the same time, we try to grow our economic development. We work really close with John Brandt from the Chamber and the Petersburg Regional uh, Tourism, as well as the Richmond Regional Tourism. Uh, one of the things that uh, when we, when we uh, join the Richmond Regional Tourism, they know that the Coliseum has gone dormant in Richmond. So they're going to utilize Virginia State University's multi-purpose center. They're going to bring events there. Well, the Tri-City is going to really prosper from that because like right before COVID, Bob Dylan performed there. Well, I'm not a big Bob Dylan fan, but they're going to stay in our hotels, they're going to eat in our local restaurants, uh, and then they're going to go over to the concert. So we all win from that. So that, that's really exciting. But we try to keep the small town uh, atmosphere, but at the same time, we're trying to grow business. And I don't know about everyone in here, but uh, we, we are going to get a mission barbecue, and I posted it on my Greg Kachiba City Council Facebook page, and it is like, called viral. Uh, people have gone nuts. Uh, over 700 shares, 85,000 people to reach. So we have businesses coming into Clarence, Heights, which we're really excited about. John Brand is always uh, yelling about 100 restaurants in seven and a half square miles. Yeah, there you go. That's, That's right. ridiculous. That is. It, it really is. You know, it's. Not good for the waistline. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just need to have some self-control. I'm not sure. No, it, no probably self-control thing. So, uh, Alec, what, what's happening in your world that the folks need to know about? Well, there's a lot of things happening at all different scales. So we're right now working on an economic recovery and resiliency plan, and we expect to have some actionable strategies coming out of that that will help guide our uh, allocation of, of, of revenue through the CARES Act and hopefully through the American River Rescue Plan as well to assist our localities. Uh, but uh, for, for the business community and for uh, spot hospitality industry, and it's been especially a hard hit. It has rebounded fairly nicely with the, um, the economy opening back up, but it still uh, faces some challenges, workforce being key among those. And so uh, we at, the, at uh, Petersburg Air Regional Tourism and at Crater Planning District Commission stand ready to assist those businesses uh, with, with and help point them in the right direction or provide them with the assistance they might need with respect to working capital or procurement assistance for those that might seek to be uh, competing for government contracts. And we continue to assist our localities with the, the planning that's necessary to invest in our infrastructure because we haven't talked much about that on the economic development side in this conversation today, but it's so important getting basic uh, water and sewer in the ground so that we can uh, develop property and, and expand a business opportunity, uh, getting broadband to our residences, aspiring entrepreneurs, and even school children. And things, uh, it was critical during the um, pandemic with the lockdown, and that means, remains a priority of our region and of the Commonwealth to, to get that done. So uh, we're working at various levels to improve the, the quality of life and the economic prospects of our region. 
pleased to be here. Thanks for the right, opportunity. Thank Amy, what's the word with Gateway? Um, there's so many things, but if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna make me choose one, um, I'm gonna. That's choose what happens. We get a cheap cheerleader. Uh, um, I'm gonna choose the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. um, because I think that's what people do not know is what is on the horizon for this area. Um, during COVID, it became very obvious to our country's leaders that um, we have a problem with our our drug manufacturing because the majority of our drug manufacturing, and I'm talking 90%, is done in China and India. And, um, you know, if something were to happen with those relationships or something else like the pandemic, we cannot get people the drugs that they need to stay alive. And so um, the federal government um, and BARDA decided we're going we're gonna to bring that back. We're going to onshore pharmaceutical manufacturing in the United States, which is so exciting. And the hub of that is right here in Petersburg, Virginia. And most people do not know that. Um, Ma'am, I did not know. See, here we go. Um, well, just to give you a brief snippet, um, Frank, Dr. Frank Gupton with VCU Medicines for All um, and the uh, College of Engineering uh, is just an innovator. And he and Eric Edwards of Flow, which was based in Richmond, um, have created this continuous manufacturing process. Um, just to give you a little history, pharmaceuticals were made in batches. You had a batch. If a batch wasn't good, you threw the batch away. Um, what's going to happen now is it's going to be continuous. It's just going to keep making. It's like you feeding the dough into the spaghetti thing and the noodles come out on the other end. Um, and Frank Gupton worked at Ampac Fine, um, Fine Chemicals when it was BI Chemicals several years ago, and he knew the capabilities of that facility. And because of his relationship with them, um, he was able to make the connections and Ampac has um, broken ground on an expansion. It's going to be um, close to 200 new jobs there, high paying quality jobs. Um, Civica has broke ground in Petersburg in the same complex. Civica services um, over 60 hospital organizations to cut down the cost on basic medicines. Um, instead of going through a supplier, they go straight through Civica. That's going to be huge. Um, Flow is also part of the process. They are breaking ground in Petersburg on the AMPAC campus. Um, so I mean, we're talking over almost close to 400, 500 jobs, high paying quality advanced manufacturing mm -hmm. jobs in pharmaceuticals. And it's here in Petersburg. Um, and so our focus, one of our focuses right now is to grow that hub. So we are marketing this region, um, the different sites and buildings that we have all throughout the region, because there's going to be different groups that want to be close to that. If you make the vials, you're going to want to be close to where the drugs are being manufactured. Um, you see various things like that. And the last thing I'll say is, as part of the contract with the federal government, the national stockpile for pharmaceuticals is going to be in Petersburg, Virginia. Hmm. Yeah. The national stockpile. Hmm. So I'll just leave it at that, that, you know, it is a new day and the horizon is, um, it, there are great things on the horizon for this now, that, You know, that's exciting news that most people just don't know about. They do not. Mr. and Mrs. Davis. Oh, man, like you said, so one thing, right? <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> so um, many. I think uh, one unique insight for, for Anchor and for us is that uh, we had the, uh, the privilege and to work with companies across and throughout the United States. So that unique insight um, it allows us to see the current um, issues, especially workplace and, and really what's going on in returning to work and how mm -hmm. um, across industry, how do employers or employees, you know, employers hire and bring back or either extend the workplace um, digitally? And what does that look like? I think the hard question that we all have to face is the world post-COVID is changing. So how do we change with it? How do we keep with it? And number one, so what does that entail? How do we hire? And here's the other thing. How do we fire? Yeah. Um, those are the things that we have to actually address and build a culture around that to hire well, to train well, but not afraid to actually fire well. Um, and firing is the ugly side of a business, but it actually protects your culture and your business. So looking at that things, and so what we bring to the table is every coach is not the same. So what does that mean? How do we certify coaches? We have our coaching staff. We are actually certified. Certification matters. 
um, because it tells the story of where you're able to go and how far you're able to go to train um, industry and to have an impact in your industry. So not only are, is our insight um, across and throughout the United States, but we're actually certified coaches and certified consultants to able to tackle those tough uh, questions and allow that business to grow in the right way. One of my, my ESPN Richmond 106.1 is where you find us 5 to 7 a.m. Also in the choice, which is uh, 105.3, 2 to 3 every day. We're gonna, okay, so we're getting short on time. What we're going to do next is you're going to give your contact information. And for anyone who's ever been on the program, they understand I always ask people, what gives you hope? You guys can't be long-winded like, you know, you know, Baptist preachers. So, you know, you got to tell us what gives you hope, your contact info, and we're going to start with our friend. What gives me hope is that uh, my faith, my faith is renewed every day, new mercies mm -hmm. every day. And so that gives me hope <laughs> that we work toward uh, something that's bigger than ourselves, to leave a legacy so that, you know, our, our dash, what happens in the middle. And so that's what gives me hope to, to build my hometown where I grew up. That's important. It's personal for me to ensure that Brunswick town, County continues to grow and strive. And so I can be reached at Alfreda Reynolds at BrunswickCO.com, Brunswick County, Virginia, um, and also on Facebook. Uh, what gives me hope is um, there's a lot of negative stuff here in the area sometimes, uh, especially in the Petersburg area. And I, I think what gives me hope is even though some of that is still going on, people are still getting out and doing the grind every single day. And they're trying to do good. They're trying to make things happen around the community. Um, I was out riding around this morning about 7.30, guys out mowing grass, cleaning up the streets and things like that because they know that that's what's needed. Uh, so it, it's a community effort. It takes a village. And so when I see that in the city of Petersburg, that gives me hope about what's going on and, and around this whole entire area. My name is Ray Ferguson. You can contact me at 804-621-5120 about anything that I do. All right, so uh, what gives me hope is honestly just everybody going back to normal, not having to wear a mask right now is really hopeful. Um, <laughs> very excited to see what comes. I think, you know, I, I really like how creative everybody got during COVID. I think, like we all talked about, I mean, everything's changed, I think, kind of for the better. I mean, we've kind of done some stuff. Um, but you can, my name is Brody Rotzel. You can reach me at uh, brody.rotzel at vsbnet.com. You can check us out on the website, um, Instagram, Twitter. LinkedIn, you know, all the social media. So what gives me hope is my faith, number one, my family, number two, um, and then just connecting with like-minded individuals who really want to see a change in the communities that we live in and in the world in a whole. So being able to connect and actually come up with ideas of how we can make an impactful change within our communities and actually execute on that. Um, that, that really does give me hope, and I see a lot of that happening, even with Mike and bringing this all together, um, just making those connections with people that we really, you know, haven't had an opportunity to meet and see how we can utilize each other um, to be able to grow whatever it is that we're trying to grow within our own businesses. Um, my name is Nicole Reed, Nicole Reed Real Estate and Associates. You can uh, reach me at www.nicolereadrealestate.com. Um, and on social media, Nicole Reed Real Estate 1 for Facebook and Nicole Reed Real Estate and Um, Aaron Owens, um, what gives me hope? Um, after this weekend, after July 4th weekend, I received a lot of hope. Um, me and my family went to a Flying Squirrels baseball game um, on Sunday. And seeing my son, he's going to be two years old in August, um, he had a great time. But seeing <laughs> seeing all the other you know people around, in the stadium, all the other families together, smiling, people outside in the parking lot and the vehicles watching the fireworks and stuff. That kind of gave me a little bit of hope seeing communities come together. So, and then also us here on this panel, um, different business owners working together, being able to refer business to one another, and um, you know, just being a part of this group here. So, once again, my name is Aaron Owens um, with U.S. Pest Control. You can reach me at 804-788-0800, or you can reach me by email at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at uspestcontrolinc.com. Thank you. 
Uh, what gives me hope is seeing how the community can come together and uh, come through uh, adversity and uh, difficult situation, not only uh, uh, local community, but the state and as well as the country. So, you know, the city of Kelowna Heights, uh, I always tell our folks that uh, we can do a lot of things, but if the community gets involved, we can even be a, a better place to live. And I, I saw that through COVID, so that's exciting and that gives me hope. Uh, I am Mayor Greg Kachuba. Uh, my contact information is on the City of Kona Heights uh, website. And the telephone number, if you want to reach out to our clerk at council, who can reach me or any of the other council members, is 804-520-9360. Thanks, Mike. For Thank you. What gives me hope is an image that appeared in the Times-Dispatch just a, a couple of weeks ago in the Sunday paper, an image of the southern trailhead of the Fall Line Trail appeared. It is a bike ped pedestrian trail that will cross the Appomattox River from the city of Petersburg to the campus of Virginia State University connecting Petersburg to Chesterfield County to Colonial Heights and points northward. And it shows if we will come together and do something aspirational that we can get something done. This could be a postcard image for the Tri-Cities area and I'm excited by the potential for that project. And we're working on finding funding now, and we're optimistic that, that will happen. I'm Alec Brebner, the Executive Director at the Crater Planning District Commission. You can find us on the internet at craterpdc.org. You can also find our tourism page, bestpartva.org. Uh, we are Petersburg Area Regional Tourism, the best part of Virginia. Thank you for your time. Thanks, for man. I like that. I like that. that that's good. Okay. Um, what gives me hope is the leadership that we have in this region. We have a great group of people that uh, really want to see the betterment of not just their individual localities but the region as a whole and as several people have stated today when you work together as a group your results are just going to be tenfold of what they could be alone so I'm, I'm really excited about the leadership that we do have here again my name is Amy Everett I'm with Virginia's Gateway Region our website is gatewayregion.com I can be reached at a Everett at gatewayregion.com and my number is 804-732-8971. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm gonna speak for both of us. Um, our faith gives us hope um, as well as being able to see adults make the choice to unlearn behaviors and relearn and restore communities so we can be able to gather as we are now um, and just come together as a community, not just it tri-state or you know cities, but also nationally. And um, uh, just being able to, to come together and, and communicate with one another in a peaceful manner. So that, that really gives me hope, because I've, I've seen it. Um, and for Anchor Inn here in the Chesterfield region, we relocated here a year ago. So um, you can reach us at www.anchorin.co. Sorry, my name is Kelly Suazo Davis, and my phone number is 915 244 2338. And we are here to help you anchor in your why and thrive in your what. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank these folks for coming out and, and helping. I'm getting a uh, fire. Text message from my man Emmanuel right there to stay on track because he thinks that sometimes I can get carried away. Uh, or we'd like to thank you guys for coming. And thanks to uh, Alfredo, Jared Reynolds, uh, John, John Brandt, uh, Brody, Nicole Reed, Chef, Ma Chef Michelle right there, uh, all the folks who made this, Kim Ely. She's going to be in a panel coming up. So uh, on the mic with Mike, uh, we'll be back. Thanks for you. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Please take care. Bye. <laughs>